Hello guys, I may sit down here, here for another movie review. Tonight I went and saw Fifty Shades Darker by myself. And no, I'm not a creep. No, I have a life. I just wanted to go see it by myself because I didn't want to take anybody else to the literal torture chamber that I had to go through tonight. I had went and saw the first one about two years. Uh, the first one, you know, it was a real big shocker to me. Uh, it was really shocking. And, you know, I never, I never got into the whole nympho thing. I've never, I've never, you know, been interested in tying my partners up or doing any of this stuff. It was a big shock for me. It was really interesting. But this film really fell short of where the first film made a huge footprint. No matter how people may rate it or have their or have their beliefs against it. You know, in my opinion, the first film was actually, you know, kind of trekking in new territory people aren't used to. Even though it was not a love story, uh, you, if you don't feel it's a love story, it was a pretty interesting uh, topic to, you know, put in the film. But if we're going to be talking about Fifty Shades Darker, whoo! While walking into this movie theater, there is maybe 20, 15 people tops. And I think about maybe five left. I went online, after I seen the movie, I went online, I wasn't trying to spoil or, you know, gain anybody else's viewpoint until I actually watched it and myself and was able to film my own viewpoint. And uh, most of the reviews were right. Uh, this movie had a uh, 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. I, uh, I honestly never seen a movie that bad. Um, so, the plot. So, plot pretty much picks off where you thought it would. Uh, you know, in the last film, um, Anastasia had ran away from Christian because he, he had, um, he was basically beating on her, like, really bad. Um, not, not in a domestic violence type of sense, but in, in the, um, the nympho type of, the nympho things that they're doing, I'm not totally sure. I've never been into it, so I wouldn't be able to really tell you what it is, but, um, she had enough, so she ran. Um, so she's at a new job, and, uh, like not even 10 minutes in the film, Christian shows up. Now, uh, the way he shows up, I'll talk about, I'll reference that later, but I'm not gonna spoil, I'm not gonna spoil anything. So the whole, the whole uh, movie is kind of sitting around about how they get back together. And, um, you know, a bunch of things happen, maybe too many things happen for um, us to really care about that. Mm -hmm. Before the movie even officially starts, before the title screen, there's a flashback of domestic violence. Um, I just like really. Uh, it gets explain. It gets explained more, but it doesn't get the ex the explanation it deserves. It doesn't get fleshed out like it deserves. And like the the flashback is just so unnecessary. It, I really feel like it was a poor choice to put that there. And it does get referenced later in the film, but it gets cut so terribly that um, I think it would just been better, you know, just leaving a flashback from the beginning of the film, and then talking that one through, and and letting the audience actually kind of imagine that, you know. I mean, I know it's an official medium you're supposed to show people, but sometimes putting a thought in their head is just as powerful as putting the picture on the screen. The other movie. Christian starts experiencing ghosts from his past, and uh, literally, there's some. There's one character that was referenced in the earlier film, Fifty Shades of Grey, and uh, she makes an appearance. So, you guys remember the contract from the first movie? That was like the driving point behind that whole movie. Well, in a theme that fits this whole movie, that thing is resolved within the first ten minutes. They spent a whole movie arguing about it to saw in the first 10 minutes. And that's why I was kind of like, you know, you, it, it would have it been at least old, but, you know, that's at least familiar territory for your audience to kind of start off on, be able to relate to the film from the first one. And they kind of just screw it up by just resolving it so quickly. And it, it's a constant theme throughout the movie, and it's one that... You know, when it happens, you're kind of disappointed. It's not satisfying to sit through it and watch, and watch something come up in minute 32 and be resolved at minute 34. It's not really, it's not, it's just not good cinema. There's a soccer following the couple, and um, you know this person is tied to one of the characters in some way, 
and um, that's just one of the many uh, plots. And uh, uh, there's maybe like four different plots, but so side plots, but near one of them get fleshed out. It's really bad how they present them and they immediately resolve them. Now one of them does actually kind of make it to the end of the film, but all the rest of them are just, they're dealt with so swiftly that it's like, you might as well have not put it in the film or even made it a big deal in the first place. I really felt as though that's where the film, I really feel that's why the film really disengaged me at first. Well, not at first, disengaged me about, through about maybe 75% of it. Um, you know, there was way too many things to really care about. Um, there's some serious, serious, there's actually a serious, serious scene that, um, you know, you would think that had an effect on a film, but no, it doesn't. And that's, that's why, why I watched that, why I saw, you know, that's why I just instantly, that's why I almost had to quit from walking out. The story is not as impacting as the first one. It doesn't have that shock value. I feel like a lot of people are really just giving it a lot of flack because it doesn't have that original shock value of all this crazy rocky sex of the first one. It actually tries to stray from it. And I think that's what hurt it in the wrong run. The characters and acting. Wow. Um, Christian. Wow. That was some stiff acting. You feeling like a bored yet, man? Um, Chelsea Dorn. Uh, well, I don't know what his name is. I really don't care. Um, Christian Gray. His acting was... I mean, to say bad would be an understatement. Um, most of the time, his character shows no emotion. I think it's cause I don't think it's mainly the actor. It's more so the character. But um, maybe it's not the actor. But the character being written like that is a mistake in itself. Uh, you can't have a character who barely shows emotion through the whole movie. I mean, he does show it every now and then. Well, and by every now and then, I mean like three times throughout this film that's like about 130 minutes long I think uh, I meant hour 30 minutes okay yeah 90 minutes my bad about that guys his character obviously hasn't changed in the last film um, so the same traits and any changes that he does show seem really unearned and really forced just to make it seem as though you know they're going somewhere I didn't like that. Um, Anastasia Steele, uh, her character, uh, I was kind of on the fence. I mean, I feel like, not just because of the, the nudity in the film, but um, I feel like, you know, she did deliver sometimes, but there were other times that her character was just kind of, kind of checked out. And it really showed. It really did show. Um, I mean, there's some scenes that could really just see these actors just staring at each other and it's like they're just they're really looking at each other like they're in their next paycheck. It's really bad. Side notes. So like there's this boat scene of her driving a boat. And you know how boring I'm saying this? That's how boring the boat scene was. It took like 30 cuts. There were enough cuts in that one scene to feed a family of 50. It was totally unnecessary. And I was just like, what is going on? It was really, really unnecessary. Um, some of the situations, some of the problems that arise in this film, feel like they'll actually take like a long time to resolve. There's a bunch of them. There's about four, I, I can name off the top of my head. There's about five of them. And they just get resolved so quickly that it's hard to get invested in them and really see how the characters are really dealing with them. And the problem with that, you know, it's not keeping the it's not keeping your audience on the edge of your seat. It's confusing your audience and making them uninterested. And I mean, a few of these things happened. I remember the last big one when that big if the um, something really bad happened to one of the character, really important characters in our story, like almost death wise. And and then they're all right. And like I almost walked out of the movie right there. I was got on my seat and I sat back down like, you know what, I'm actually going to try and watch this movie. Um, I just thought it was really, 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 you, like they really could have capitalized off of this, but instead they decided to just run over it. And that was a running theme throughout the whole film. That's something that I just couldn't get with. The um, bringing up an issue and resolving within five minutes 
Uh, it just really minimizes the effect it has on your audience. Uh, one thing I did like about this movie was they actually had a little bit more natural humor. Sometimes it was corny, sometimes, you know, I hear people laugh behind me and I'm stone faced. It takes a lot to make me laugh. And I, I, but you know, there was sometimes, like, there's maybe like two or three times I actually laughed at this film. And it wasn't just, you know, sexual humor or any of that, any force humor. It was actually natural humor. And, you know, it kind of, it kind of hinted that the characters were, you know, had a little bit of chemistry, but it just wasn't enough to actually make me feel, yeah, these guys are really good on screen together. Uh, there's a power shift for Anna. Uh, it comes like halfway through the film, I'm not gonna say what it is, but I really would have felt like it would have worked so much better to put that earlier in the film. Like, it would have been so much better. Um, and most of the serious scenes in this movie are just really hard to take seriously. Uh, there's this one scene where Christian is um, talking to Anna about something really serious, and you know you, you can tell it's serious, but I'm just sitting here. I'm just like, is this supposed to be? Am I supposed to be laughing, or am I supposed to be like, you know, kind of grinding my teeth? And I was just like, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't be having to ask myself that question. I wouldn't say this movie was worth a 7%, but I definitely wouldn't say it's a 20. Uh, I would definitely have to give Fifty Shades Darker a D plus. Um, this film just had a bunch of things wrong with it. There's numerous things. Uh, this, that's it for now, though, you guys. Um, I hope I get to see some better movies later on. Uh, one movie that I definitely am going to review is Get Out. Uh, I really saw the I saw the trailer for that and I was like, ooh, this actually be really interesting. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be a social commentary, but it would be amazing if it would and I really wanna see that movie. So if look out there for that review. Uh if you guys have any thoughts or comments about the movie or anything about anything that I said, um please leave in the comment section. Of course I'm always happy to hear other people's thoughts. But anyways, Eric O'Neill, I made you sit down. Sign it off.